feel like that moment was a, an example of how extreme a lot of these guys really are. Obviously, it was only one person that did that. But like within that uh, that Vice documentary that, that followed the... I can't remember his name. He was, Cantwell. Yeah, Cantwell. Thank you. Uh, you know, and he was basically excusing it and, and saying that, yeah, you know, she should just got out of the way. You know, of course, the kind of the rhetoric of a psychopath, but, uh, the rally, the, the, the rally organizer, uh, Jason Kessler also uh, sort of said it was payback for communist atrocities and justified it. Oh God. Yeah. That's insane. So, so the fall, the fallout's been this. The, the, it, it was supposed to be the big victory for the the alt right and the far right, you know, for the for white nationalists and fascists in the U.S. And then it really turned into a big defeat for them because they just look like a bunch of cold blooded murderers. And they all right. they don't think it's a victory. They all fell out with each other. Um, people who've been identified, I talk about this in this article on Truth Out. People who've been identified as being at the march have lost their jobs. Something like ten digital platforms started cleaning house of all kinds of white nationalists. Um, content on them. The Daily Stormer, which is the biggest neo-Nazi website in the U.S., ended up being chased off the web. You can only access it on on the dark web. You have to have a Tor browser to do it. Um, other websites, Stormfront's lost. It's 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 gone offline. Um, um, a couple other ones briefly went offline. Um, they're all fighting with each other. Some of the other big figures are now saying they're not alt right and they have nothing to do with it, even though it's a lie. People like Gavin McGinnis, who is one of the co-founders of Vice Magazine, who runs this um, international fight gang called the Proud Boys. Who, in order to advance in the organization, you have to like get in a in a fight with your opponent, so they're explicitly violent. He, even though the organizer of the march was a Proud Boy, and there's pictures of his his like very close uh you know members of the Proud Boys who are close to him at the march taking selfies like with David Duke the former Klan leader. That's now mm-hmm. and even though their website said Proud Boys are welcome to come to the rally beforehand, they took that post down and now he says we're not outright. Proud Boys are, are banned from going to any outright events. And if you see a Proud Boy at an event, it's he's not a, he's not actually one of ours. It's someone pretending to be a Proud Boy to make us look bad. Which is hilarious because now he's trying to cover that when his own people do go, he's going to pretend they're not his because there were a bunch in Berkeley too. So and there were two big marches also that were canceled. One this march against Google that was going to be done by another alt light dude, Jack the Soviet. Um, the, this fellow got fired for writing this like hideous, hideously misogynistic anti diversity memo. So there's going to be marches against Google. And then there was going to be a huge Islamophobic march on September 9th. And that had attracted in the past a bunch of alt right people. And that also was canceled. So there was like a lot of fallout, like structural fallout um, for uh, against them. So I imagine, though, that this isn't going to go away. Right. I mean, just because there's been, you know, it's it's great that they're that that the fallout has been that they're not able to organize very effectively. Um, obviously, the the point of the Unite the Right was to kind of come up with some sort of cohesive platform that all of them can get on and sort of you know, move forward in their, their ideas and their, their, their movement. But, uh, you know, the fallout of this, 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 ter- I guess you could call it a terrorist attack in Charlottesville. I mean, what do you, what do you see? Because obviously you've studied these movements for quite a long time. So I imagine that you're not, you know, you're not, you're not going to just believe that they're going to go away. Obviously not. Uh, so what is the next what is the, what is the future of these movements? What do you see kind of developing out of this? Well, so like the article I picked Gettysburg as a metaphor first because the rally was to defend the statue of General Lee, who is the commander at Gettysburg. Mm. Um, but second, Gettysburg happened in 1863, and the and the war went on for two more years. Uh, it was a huge battle, and it stopped the advance of the Southern forces who were going into the north. And so, to me, the alt right has been moving. Um, from strength to strength and growing stronger and stronger in coalition with these other far right elements. And I think this has, it's not that it's going to be over, but it's going to, it stopped its um, momentum and it stopped its advance. Um, I don't think, I think people who've already drank the Kool-Aid are going to stay in, but I think its ability to recruit more people and gain more legitimacy is, is going to like not, it, it is going to decrease from this point. Um, Often these movements don't go away very quickly. I'm hoping. I'm hoping this has been its high point and it's now going to be in decline. But for sure the decline will take a while. Um, 
you know, Trump did clean house of his two most right wing advisors, uh, Stephen uh, Bannon and Sebastian Gorka. These were the two people he had appointed that have direct ties to white nationalist movements and fascist movements. They're both gone. Um, so this makes the Trump administration look less fascist. Um, but, you know, Trump is still going to provide a warm as long as he's in power, he's going to provide a warm um, sort of a political and cultural climate you know, for xenophobia and intolerance and Islamophobia and coded anti-Semitism and anti-LGBTQ and, and just everything else, right? So he's going to still make a, even with these guys gone, he's going to make it a good recruiting time for them. And the, like, the, the movements don't go away quickly. The militia movement in the 90s, in 95, two of the adherents had bombed the Oklahoma City uh, building in, um, in, a, 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 in Oklahoma. And killed 168 people. And a lot of people think that broke the militia movement, but in fact, it increased in numbers the next year. And it increased because moderate people, as they moved away, more hardline people were attracted to the movement who might have before been like, no, we don't want anything to do with it. So sometimes there's these funny dynamics where, where even as, as movements hit their, hit their peak, they really do take a while to, to, um, to, to feed out. And it may be that Trump has just opened a, a genie's, um, a genie's box in America for, for white, um, racially resentful Americans who feel free and emboldened to express things that were really taboo to express before Trump. If you remember before his campaign, he sort of bald faced Islamophobic statements, for example. You'd hear him once in a while from some fringy congressman, but they were not allowed in polite conversation. And now they're like, you know, how can you say something that the president is saying is not like acceptable political discourse? So he might have really, I mean, there may be, we may see a, a continual, a continued re-legitimization of, of, um, white national sentiment that has been taboo in the post-World War II period. Um, that, that may, that may be a, a permanent fixture, a fixture that goes on for decades. It's unclear also what the right. alt-right's going to do. There was this really creepy, um, article on altright.com where they're like, all right, Antifa's burned our boats behind us. Um, are we gonna, and it, it wasn't clear what they were saying, but it was like, it could be read either that they were not going to try to attract more followers and they're just going to work with their hardline supporters, or it implied that they might be going underground and taking terrorist action. It was, wasn't stated, but there was a lot of sort of dark implications in this. So both of these things are possible and they both might happen at the same time. 